Good morning, Richard. Good morning, my friend. How are you doing, sir? How are you doing? I'm just waiting for you to get tuned in. Richard, are you good? Fantastic, fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. Good morning, good morning, my people. Good morning. I hope everyone is well. How is everyone feeling today, Manuel? Good afternoon, sir. Give me a thumbs up if everyone is feeling good today. Everyone is feeling good. Give me a thumbs up. I've got some energy for you today. I've got some information to deliver. Guys, just in case you haven't noticed, I'm feeling incredible today. I just thought I'd share that with everyone. My energy is high. I've got some information for you guys. And as usual, we're going to have a great 30 minutes. I'm just going to hope that it doesn't fly by too quickly, as it always does. But hey, we're used to that, right? We're not going to allow that to stop us having some fun. I'm going to give some of the late people one more minute because as you guys know i don't run for people that are late because i appreciate your time i run for people that are on time so yeah we're going to give them literally one more minute to tune in and other than that i am going to then start delivering okay okay excellent excellent see some new faces today which is incredible good to see all the new faces good to see the new faces let us see, let us see. As I said, literally one more minute just to allow people to roll in, just for those that are slightly behind time. Okay, I'm glad everyone is on mute so we can have a nice clear background. Okay, what the time? Right, that's it guys. You know I don't run for people that are run, running late. So first things first, I have to ask. It's a, a usual question for me. It might be early in the morning for all of you. Who's nourished their minds this morning already? Who's nourished their minds? Fantastic, because you know what? We always nourish our bodies, but so many of us forget to nourish our minds. And in effect, as I want you all to understand, those of you who are regulars here, those of you know, it's your mind that runs your body. So we have to ensure that we nourish our minds. We nourish the, the operating system that drives us every day. Today, guys, I want to talk about five things that highly effective people do. Five things that highly effective people do. Walter, are you suffering to hear me? Are you struggling to hear? If you're on a cell phone, Walter, there should be a connect, there should be a button on your screen that allows you to press it and it will turn on the speaker. So tap on screen, you should see the controls come up, and there should be something that looks similar to a speaker, and then you'll have the the my voice projecting out the speaker, and it should be a bit clearer for you. I'm sure you're going to find it soon, my friend. Okay, so as I was saying, five things that highly effective people do. The first thing that highly effective people do is they wake up early. It seems simple. It seems like this is something you'd kind of consider. But yes, highly effective people, they ensure they always wake up early. For example, Richard Branson, he says that he's up at 5.30 every day. Now let's think about the logic behind this. If you're up at 5.30 every day, you've effectively got at least two and a half, sometimes three hours before other people are even kind of functioning. You know, people that work a nine to five, they might be in at half past eight and they consider themselves early. But if you're up at 5.30, you've really got a jump start on the day. You've really got a head start against everyone else. It's quiet, it's peaceful, you can collect your thoughts. That time of the day, for me, used to be a beautiful time. And the reason why I say used to be, because I work the schedule I do, and I'm generally dealing with you guys abroad, primarily in America, my day now starts, my day starts later and ends later. But I used to be someone who also chose to wake up at 5.30 every day. Because just those extra couple of hours where it's quiet, you've got your time to think, You've got no disturbances. By the time to get, you get to midday, you almost feel as though you've always done the day's work and you're only at lunchtime. That's what highly effective people do. Highly effective people get a jump start on the day. Why is that important, guys? Why would you consider that to be important? Phil, I want to have an interactive conversation today. I don't want to do all the talking. Phil, can you hear me? Phil looks like he's struggling. Richard, I know you can hear me, sir. Richard, I'm going to go ahead and take you off me. Good morning, Richard. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. 
How are Richard, you? Ah, always incredible. So you know me, when I wake up in the morning and my lungs fill with air, that is a sign it's going to be a great day. So Richard, talk to me. Why would you consider it important that you get up early in the morning? Well, you want us, to, uh, not us, but uh, feeding our minds. Yeah, there's some time to reflect, so do some reading, uh, do some meditation if, uh, if that's what people like to do. I'm uh, working on that myself. Good, good, good. Fantastic. Thank you for your thoughts, sir. It's almost as though you tapped into my mind and you understood what I was going to talk about in terms of the five highly effective things that people do. Because the second thing, which is just touched on it, the second thing that highly effective people do early in the morning is they meditate. Meditation, now, it's got so many different uh, thoughts, connotations. People have got different ideas about meditation. They think it has to be deep. You've got to be sitting there, cross legs. Um, no, it doesn't have to be that deep. You can literally just sit down, focus on your breathing, collect your thoughts. But the reason why meditation is so incredible early in the morning is because one of the things that meditation does, it reduces stress levels. It gives you clarity of thought. And imagine you get yourself in this routine where you're doing this every single day, first thing in the morning, you're reducing any levels of stress, you're getting clarity of thought, that has to, like getting up early, give you a jump start on the day. You're in a completely different thought process. It allows you to really, really absorb your environment. But more than that, it allows you to understand who you are. When you've got clarity, that's when your inner genius starts to speak clearly. Because let's understand this, guys. Your inner genius is always speaking to you. But unfortunately, so many of us have that monkey chatter, that noise that's in your mind consistently. When you've got that noise, you can't hear your genius. Your genius isn't going to stand at the top of the mountain and scream to you. It's not going to do that. Your genius is going to consistently talk at the same level, but it's your job to quieten your mind so you can hear your inner genius speak. This is one of the things that meditation does effortlessly. You don't have to meditate for half an hour or an hour, just 15 minutes, for example. That in itself would be enough time for you to just quieten your mind, calm yourself and reduce stress levels. Because th let's think about it. In a world where we are bombarded with information, where we are consistently being put onto other people's agendas via emails, via text messages. Let's think about this. You haven't really got much time to yourself. People can contact you pretty much 24 seven if you allow them to. But getting up early and practicing meditation first thing in the day, that's your quiet time. That allows you to bring your mind, center yourself, align your energy. Remember guys, I talk about this consistently that we live in an energetic world. You attract positively when you increase your vibration. Your vibration increases when you feel good. So do you think it makes sense to meditate, quiet your mind, reduce your stress, therefore increasing your vibration, making you feel good? putting you in a positive state, of course it makes sense. Why wouldn't you do it? Success leaves clues. Let's start tagging onto the shirt tails of successful people. Let's start modeling them. Let's start doing the things that they do consistently. Let's start waking up on purpose, guys. Being habitual about your routines. Think about that. You wake up at 5.30, you meditate. What else can you achieve? Do you want to live on autopilot? Or do you want to control your life? I'd say that those things are a prime opportunity for you to start controlling your life. Wouldn't you agree? Highly effective habit number three. Practicing gratitude. Once again, something I speak about frequently. Gratitude, just the 
emotion of gratitude puts you in a completely different headspace. Gratitude is one of those emotions that you can put that next to love. And you're absolutely right, Richard. In terms of meditation, there are many applications that can give you a guided meditation that can help you. But yeah, highly effective habit number three is practicing gratitude. Because as I've said frequently, when you learn to control your unconscious mind, you learn to tap into that vast energy, you start to realize how it, how it functions, how it operates. And let's think about this. Let's think about the psychology behind this. When you're grateful for something, you're grateful usually because you are in receipt of something. So if you're grateful for life, if you're grateful for your future that hasn't yet arrived, let's think about the power of that. You're grateful for your future that hasn't yet arrived. Who thinks that that's gonna have an, a highly positive effect on your unconscious mind believing that your future's already here. Guys, give me a thumbs up if this is resonating. Give me a thumbs up if this is making sense. Give me some yeses in the chat box. I want some energy today. I want some energy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, because for me, I just want to pass on and help you guys understand what highly effective people do. They don't start the day by accident. The first three things that they've done, wake up early, meditate, and then practice gratitude, you're onto a winning start already. Let's think about this. Being grateful for the life you want, even before it arrives, has to propel the universe into bringing that life to you sooner rather than later. When you are grateful for things, the universe will give you more things to be grateful for. It's how it operates. You have to understand that you have to be habitual about your behaviors. You have to get in alignment. You have to make sure your energy and your vibration is pleasing to the universe so that the universe can work with you. Many people believe that their life happens to them. Many people are operating in a mode I call default. And when you're operating in default, it kind of just depends on whether you're in a good or bad energetic vibration as to what happens in your life. But let's start being purposeful about how we do things. Let's start being specific about how we drive things. Powerful habit number four, reading. I consistently talk about the power of reading. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, they both attribute their incredible success to the fact that they read consistently, but they don't just read and consume information. They are what I call mass producers. They read, they consume, they implement, and they produce a result. I've said this many times previously. On average, very, very successful people either read or listen to with the with the fact we've got audiobooks, one book every single week. If you're not sure, there's an application called Audible. It's an Amazon company, so as long as you've got an Amazon account, you can sign up to Audible. They will actually be so generous as to give you your first credit for free. But let's think about this. How much knowledge can you acquire if you were to read a book a week? And in all honesty, how much downtime do we have? How much time do we have where we're not using our time effectively? I know some people here still work a job. And if you still work a job, while you're commuting, whether that be on public transport, whether that be in your car. I consider my car to be my university. And I'll explain exactly what I mean by that. Whenever I'm in my car, we've got technology. My phone connects to my car. I've got Audible on my phone. So I listen to an audiobook. I don't need to focus on driving. Driving, as we all know, becomes second nature very quickly. So why not? If we're in your car and you're effectively doing nothing, 
because all you've got to do is drive, which is pretty much on autopilot, listen to a book. Take on board that information. Therefore, you're using that time effectively. And with the amount of negativity that's in social media, that's in the news, that's in programs that we watch, reading counteracts that. Reading gives you back that balance because you are now choosing what you nourish your mind with. And with the thumbs up, do you believe that if you nourish your mind effectively, it's going to put you in a better space? Absolutely, 100%, right? Give me some yeses in the chat box. If you nourish your mind with productive information, you have to put your mind in a better space. You are now taking control of your daily activities. You're taking control of what you've decided to put into your mind. And if you put information into your mind, you'll acquire more knowledge. But this is one of the other things I tell people all the time. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is only potential power. If you take on board knowledge and you do nothing with it, how powerful is that, guys? However, if you apply the knowledge, wouldn't that put you one step ahead? You start applying knowledge that you're taking on board? Reading information from highly effective people? That allows you to start modeling exactly what they do. And if success leaves clues, surely we should start mimicking successful people. I speak about the power of a mentor all of the time. A mentor is someone that's already been to exactly where you want to go. Therefore, they can help guide you. They can make your journey a whole lot easier. They can cut light years off of your learning curve. So let's start choosing our mentors. And you can do this through long distance reading. Read autobiographies. Richard Branson's second autobiography is absolutely incredible. When you listen to how these people operate, when you listen to how they consciously made a choice to direct their life. And then it just seems as though they take on board information, they get different ideas, and with their different ideas, it just allows them to, oh, wow, maybe if I do that and I add that to that, your mind then starts to be creative. Creativity doesn't happen by accident. It happens when you fuel your mind. All of these things are vitally important, guys. It excites me to be talking about this. It excites me to be sharing this simply because, you know what, there's so much value in it. Powerful habit number five. Do something scary. Successful people always do this. I'm going to tell you why they always do this. Because when you do something that scares you, you push your boundaries. Because we have to understand that yes, fear is real. However, the biggest fear generally is created in your mind. And this is one of the things I suggest to people all the time. Your mind will be one of two things. It will be your biggest. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic, my friend. Do one thing every day that scares you. That's right. Because when you do that, as I said, it builds confidence. It pushes your boundaries. And the two things that your mind will be, it will either be your greatest ally or your biggest adversary. And knowing how powerful your unconscious mind is, me personally, I don't know about you guys, but me personally, I want my unconscious mind to be my ally. Give me a thumbs up if you want your unconscious mind to be working with you, if you want your unconscious mind to be on your side rather than working against you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Give me some yeses in the chat box. I definitely want my unconscious mind working with me. That's why I do things that scare me. Guys, I'll be honest with you. I used to think I was scared of heights. The reason why I say I used to is because I can remember going in a cable car across London 
or from from we have a, a, a dome in Greenwich and you can go across the cable car it takes you to the other side of the river and although I felt secure when I was in the cable car and I felt quite comfortable just being up that high me personally I couldn't help but get thoughts of wow what would happen if like this cable car just stopped or, or the game broke. Like, you think about it. And being up that high didn't make me feel comfortable. Although I felt pretty safe, I didn't really feel comfortable. So what did I do last year? I did a skydive. I jumped out of a plane from 12,000 feet. Now, if that's not pushing your boundaries when you think you're scared of heights, I don't know what it is. But if you do something that frightens you every single day, that is one of the quickest and most surefire ways to build up bulletproof confidence. Because the thing is, every time you do something that frightens you and you push your boundaries, in fact, I'm going to ask you guys a question. How many times has you thought about doing something that frightened you and your mind is giving you all of these stories? Don't do that, it could be dangerous. Don't do that, you might lose money. Don't do that, you're not knowledgeable enough. Don't do that, what are people going to say if you fail? And then you push your boundaries and you actually do it, and you realise to yourself, wow, it actually wasn't that hard. Give me a thumbs up if you've done that and you've experienced that on multiple occasions. Give me some yeses in the chat box. If when you challenge yourself, you realise in your own mind, wow, it wasn't actually as hard as I thought it was going to be. Each and every time you do that, you build up a level of confidence. That level of confidence, <laughs> Richard, you're not a fan of roller coasters, no? <laughs> but I'm sure once you've gone on them a few times, you realize they're actually enjoyable. But the thing is, once you push your boundaries, once you make your mind understand, uh -huh, you're not gonna be the boss of me, I'm going to be the boss of you. I'm going to push you, I'm going to ensure that we challenge ourselves consistently daily, your mind starts to realise, you know what, I think I trust Kevin. I think he's got control of this situation. So in fact, rather than building up that resistance of fear all the time, maybe I'll just trust in him and I'll realise that, you know what, he's the man. Wow, wow, Audi, you rode a ball? You know what, I've ridden a mechanical one, that's about as close as I've got to it. I haven't actually got on a four-legged one that breathes, but a mechanical one was hard enough. But guys, this is what I'm talking about. Push your boundaries. Do things that frighten the heck out of you. Because then you'll realise that, you know what? A lot of this fear I create myself. I don't actually need to be that frightened. Guys, excuse me. I just need to grab a, a swig of water. This is what happens when you talk so much. Sorry, guys. Do something that frightens you. Push your boundaries. Allow yourself to realise how incredible you are. Because every single one of us on this line is incredible. Every single one of us on this line has something to offer. So just to recap the five things that highly effective people do. They wake up early. They practice meditation early in the morning. They practice gratitude. Guys, what was number four? Who's been paying attention? What was number four? Richard, are you there? Are you there? Reading, right? What's ah, that? perfect, my friend. They read. And the reason why they read is to put information in your mind. And number five, they do something scary daily. Practice these things, guys. Set yourself a routine where these things are embedded. If you get up at 7.30 each day, for the next week, try and get up at 6.30. Just push yourself that one hour earlier. See how you feel, but see how much more you achieve. And another thing I've said previously, which isn't in the five, do the toughest thing of the day first. The biggest challenge you have for that day, accomplish that first and see how incredible you feel. 
We're going off topic, but celebrate your victories. I could have given you seven things that highly effective people do, but I chose five. But there's another two for you there, guys. The toughest thing of the day, do that first. Because that unconsciously makes you feel like a winner. And in all honesty, from that point on, the rest of the day is downhill. Everything after that seems easy. Celebrate yourself. Guys, it's so important that we celebrate ourselves. Who's found those five things useful? Give me a thumbs up if those five things have been useful for you. Perfect. Give me some yeses in the chat box if those five things have been useful. Perfect. You know why? Because if we start modeling effective people, that has to, by default, make us start becoming effective. And if we can start adopting new habitual behaviors that are going to serve us, that also makes us become more effective. But that makes us become more effective on autopilot. Because remember guys, a habit is simply an action that you've done over and over and over and over again. So if that's all a habit is, why not create effective habits? Why not create habits that are going to serve you? Let's work with that. Let's create some habits that are going to drive your life in the correct direction. That are going to drive your results in the correct direction. That are going to force you to have to become an achiever. Because now you're just modeling what effective people do. Instead of just consuming information, you're producing a result based on it. When you do what highly effective people do, you must start to become effective. And over time, surely you're going, you're going to become highly effective. Is that not the goal that we're all trying to achieve? I'm sure we've all taken the time to choose to be here today, to spend time with like-minded people. When you share your time with like-minded people, the energy rubs off on you. It doesn't happen by accident. This is what powerful people do. This is collaboration. We're sharing information. What else can you do to make your day effective? I challenge you guys to think about another two or three things that you could do each day to make your day effective. So write that question at the bottom of the notes you've been writing. I've seen, nothing, I've seen many of you scribing away. Write that question at the bottom of the notes. What else could I do to become effective every day? I challenge you, think of three more things that you could do each and every day to become even more effective. How can I maximize the time that I already have available to me? How could I maximize the time that I already have available to me? Because guys, you know what? There are only 24 hours in a day, but highly effective people, they just seem to be able to do so much more, right? It's almost as though they've got a head start. It's almost as though they've got more time in the day than us. They haven't. They just prioritize the tasks they do. They spend less time sleeping. They certainly spend less time procrastinating and they get on with what they need to do. They are focused, they are clear, they have a direct intent. When you have a clear intention, you don't waste time. When you plan previously what you're gonna do for the following day, you don't waste time. When you've got a clear agenda as to how your day is gonna break out, you don't waste time. Time is a finite resource that has to be spent each and every day. We can't get it back, so invest it wisely. I spoke about this maybe last week. We have 86,400 seconds in each and every day. It has to be spent. If it has to be spent, make sure you spend it wisely. Guys, as ever, I don't know how it happens. 30, 30 minutes seems to just fly by. I really, I don't know what happens to the time. But guys, 
I want you guys to understand, all can and will be achieved one step at a time. I am committed to you guys. How committed are you to yourselves? Because if you are committed, if you're serious about making change, I want you to understand something. I'm going to be here on the same bad channel tomorrow. Guys, thank you for your time. I appreciate your energy. Have an incredible day. Go out and win. Thanks, guys. See you again soon. Take care.